Hey guys, this is Ian back with another video and welcome to my review of the Hi Feynman HER9. And I'd like to thank Hi Feynman for sending this out to me in exchange for an honest review. By the way, whatever I say in this video is my own opinion. This video has not been scripted and they will be watching this video at the same time as you guys are. Right, so this is the Hi Feynman HER9 and it's currently retailing for 599 US dollars. Uh, if you guys are interested, do check out the link down in the description below. Right, so as you can see, I have already taken it out from the box. So if you guys are interested to watch the entire unboxing of this HER9, uh, do check out the link up above. Right, so in this video, I'm going to review this HER9. At the same time, I'm going to compare them with the Edition XS, right? This is the Edition XS, which I've reviewed uh, previously. And if you guys are interested, uh, do check out the link above to watch the review of this Edition XS. Okay, so this is a very nice headphone. Let's talk about the design, uh, fit and comfort of this headphone. Uh, design, right? So the ear cups is a, is a very unique uh, ear cup. It's got this very nice uh, candy red type of spray paint on it. It's very glossy. It's very unique. It's got a very nice shape to it as well. Uh, it's got this avant-garde curvy type of shape. Uh, very unique and if you were to wear this in the public, uh, you definitely turn heads and it's through experience that I'm telling you this. Right, so yeah, it's a very nice unique design. Uh, nobody has ever seen this type of headphones before in public. The uh, Headband. Headband is really nice and plush. It's got the uh, leather uh, type uh, finish. At the same time, it's got high density foam on the inside. So it's nice and comfortable on your head. Uh, the articulation of the ear cups is pretty okay. It's nice and uh, it swivels quite a bit, right? And the front and back also, it swivels quite similar to the Edition XS. As I can see here, it's almost the same, similar, okay? All right, let's talk about the ear pads. Ear pads is nice and uh, plush, all right? It's got a microfiber fabric on the inside and the uh, outside of it is leather. So it's very nice and comfortable to wear. Let's put it on the head and show you guys. Okay, so as you can see, it sits very nicely on my head. It's very light, so I don't feel any weight on my head. It looks heavy, but actually it's not. It's very, very light. Let me just adjust this a bit. Okay, so it's very nice and you can actually adjust it uh, so that it fits to the angle of your head. Uh, the clamping force on this headphone is really soft as well. It does not press against my skull uh, and I can wear this for long periods of time. So in terms of comfort, this headphone is really comfortable on my head. Okay, so um, I like this headphone. It's really comfortable to wear. Now let's talk about the specs. So uh, this headphone can be driven in three ways. All right? You can connect it uh, single-ended, uh, which means a two 3.5 millimeter headphone jack uh, to these two ports here, or you can uh, use the Blue Mini uh, Bluetooth adapter, which comes in the package, right? And uh, you can make this headphone wireless. So uh, yeah, just connect it to the left side of the ear cups. Uh, and you can get wireless uh, Bluetooth connection to your source, which is a phone or a laptop or MacBook. Okay, or you could connect a balance out, a balance in, sorry, uh, 3.5 headphone jack, right, to the left side of the ear cups as well. So you have three different types of uh, connection to uh, this headphone. Right, let's talk about the specs, right? Uh, this headphone is a single dynamic driver. It's got a uh, close back, right? So it's, uh, you can't hear your ambient sound. At the same time, the, your uh, surrounding won't be able to hear what you're listening to. So you can comfortably wear this uh, outdoors and in the public, uh, and it's really uh, good, right? The specs of this is uh, 32 ohms, right, for the impedance. The sensitivity is 100 dB and the frequency response is 15 to 35,000 Hertz. 
And uh, yeah, the dye frame on this uh, headphone is very unique. It adopts the uh, topology technology, which was developed by Hi Feynman uh, and by Dr. Fang himself. Uh, and initially, this uh, technology was developed for the in ear monitors of Hi Feynman. And uh, since its success uh, is being implemented onto the headphone itself, uh, if, Essentially, this technology applies uh, different layers of nanoparticles onto the diaphragm of the dynamic driver, uh, which gives uh, it improves the performance of the driver itself. Okay, so uh, how do they sound, right? So there are two uh, different ways of connecting this, as I mentioned. Uh, if it's connected to Bluetooth, uh, you'll be getting uh, Aptex, X, Aptex, uh, Aptex X HD, uh, AAC, and SBC. So obviously, if it's wireless, uh, the resolution of the uh, sound that you're listening to may not be as good as the single-ended or the balanced uh, input. Okay, so while I'm listening to Wired, uh, this is the gear that I use, uh, the iFi Zendeck version 2. I also use the HipDeck version 2 uh, to test. And also, uh, a tube amp. So this is a portable tube amp by Kai, uh, the Tap S1. All right. So this is uh, it distorts the sound of the whatever is going to the headphone. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But yeah. Uh, so three different ways of of uh, driving this headphone. Uh, you can connect it to your phone directly, but um, you will then need to crank your volume all the way up to max. Uh, then you might hear something out from this headphone. So I do recommend to get uh, either a DAC or an amp to drive these headphones. So how do they sound? Uh, let's talk about sub-bass. Sub-bass is really rumbly. It's got the uh, extension, very heavy note weight. It's got a good tone and timbre, and the, the uh, sub-bass is really present. Okay, so it's forward. Uh, it, f it gives me a, a very light brain massage, and I do enjoy the sub bass on these headphones. The mid bass, mid bass is punchy, it's impactful, it's warm, and it's forward as well. So uh, you can feel that oomph and that impact and that punch uh, when listening to these headphones. So uh, I, I, would f I would say in general, the bass on this headphone is really forward. Uh, and if you are a bass head, uh, you will love this headphone very much. And I really did enjoy the base on these headphones. The mids. Mids is a little bit recessed, uh, but they are warm and they do have that uh, note weight as well. The tone and the timbre on the mids is uh, correct. It's a bit warm, right? But it's a bit too warm, uh, but it's almost correct for me, right? The instruments and the vocals, they live in this region in the mids. Uh, so I would say the instruments, they do sound a little bit laid back as well. So the violins, the pianos, the clarinets, uh, you can hear them, as, but they are not as forward in the mix as uh, some other instruments, like the percussions. So, uh, but the pianos and the violins, uh, they do sound warm, they do carry a, note, a heavy note weight as well, and uh, it's got this very soothing uh, feeling when you, when you listen to the instruments on these headphones. Uh, vocals. The male vocals also, uh, they, they do uh, command a, a great authority uh, when they are in the mix. Uh, they have that heavy note weight as well. They sound warm and soothing uh, and that raspiness of the male vocal is uh, very present. Uh, so in terms of male vocals, uh, I, I really enjoy listening to male vocals on these headphones. Uh, but uh, for female vocals, uh, they sound laid back and they sound uh, warm as well. But uh, the sparkle is not there, uh, but they don't sound sibilant, they don't, shout, they don't, they don't sound shouty, uh, at the same time they don't sound peaky, right? Uh, but, you know, the, the, uh, the lack of energy uh, is there for female vocals uh, for me. Uh, treble. Uh, treble is extended, it's well controlled. 
uh, and uh, it's easy to listen to. It's, it's got very nice and smooth uh, treble. Uh, it's not shouty as well. It's not sibilant. Uh, you won't feel any uh, fatigue uh, when you listen to treble on these headphones. So uh, I would say treble is okay. It's not the best. Uh, at the same time, it's not the worst. In fact, it's above average. Soundstage. Soundstage is more of like a living room type of soundstage. So uh, in terms of the width, uh, it's pretty okay, although maybe to the sides here. And it goes pretty far. So it's about maybe a living room type of uh, depth. Okay. Uh, the layering of the soundstage is okay as well. Uh, some instruments do mix around it with each other, uh, but the sound separation is there uh, and you can pinpoint where the instruments are. So imaging is pretty okay as well, it's above average. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best also. Uh, so it's there, okay. The detail retrieval is okay. Is the, the nuances uh, can be heard. Uh, the micro details is also pretty okay as well. So in terms of the, it's not muddy, right? It's not muffled. Uh, in, in fact, the, again, as I mentioned, the detail retrieval is above average. It's just that maybe I've been pampered by the addition access. Uh, but uh, in terms of the details uh, on these headphones, uh, they are above average. I still can hear the nuances. I can hear the details, uh, the micro details on these headphones. Uh, so as you can guess, the resolution on this headphone, uh, I feel is not as good as, as the Edition XS, but they're okay, all right? So the resolution on this headphone, again, is not muddy. Uh, you won't feel that it's like muddled type of uh, uh, sound resolution. Uh, you still feel that clar clarity, and the cleanness of the uh, treble and the mids, uh, but it's not as good as the Edition XS. Okay, so since now I'm comparing with the Edition XS, let's just bring it out, right? So um, in terms of the bass, uh, I feel that the HER9 has got better bass. It's got uh, a warmer bass as compared to the XS. Uh, the mids, uh, I would feel that the mids, uh, the addition access has got a better mids. It's more forward. Uh, it's got, it's more present and it's cleaner. It's clearer. Uh, it's just that it's not as warm as the uh, HER9. The treble, treble again, I'll give it to the addition access. It's got a nicer, cleaner, uh, more energetic uh, treble on the addition access. Uh, and yeah. Overall, the tone and the timbre, I would give it to the R9. Uh, basically, that is warmer. Uh, it sounds more true. It sounds more soothing uh, and more correct. Okay, sorry, I correct myself. This edition access sounds more correct, uh, but the R9 sounds more warm. All right, so the tone and the timbre. Uh, yeah, I, I do prefer the R9. The um, price, okay, so I think the price, uh, again, this is a pretty nice price, uh, $599. Uh, so I think I'll give the in terms of uh, performance to uh, value ratio, uh, I'll give it to the R9. So um, the overall uh, thoughts and impressions of this uh, HER9, I feel that it's more of a fun type of headphone. So if you're in a party mood uh, and you want to just enjoy your music and have a great time, uh, then this is the headphone to go for, all right? At the same time, it uh, will, be, will enable you to go Bluetooth. So I've been listening to my music, I've been watching movies, I've been playing games, uh, with this Bluetooth uh, adapter. So, and also I'm uh, using, making phone calls on this uh, headphone. So it's pretty good. Uh, I, I really uh, appreciate the fact that uh, there's this Bluetooth uh, function. In fact, let's do a sound test of the microphone so that you guys can have a listen to how the microphone sounds like, okay? Right, so let's do a short recording of the microphone. Okay, so now I'm speaking through the microphone of the HER9. How do you think I sound? 
So I sound pretty good, right? Uh, the microphone on this uh, Blue Mini is really good as I've been using it on the Diva Pro because the Diva Pro does have this same uh, Blue Mini uh, out to our uh, Bluetooth adapter. Okay, so as you can hear the uh, microphone on these um, Bluetooth uh, Mini R2R is really good. Uh, the Blue Mini, sorry, is really good. Uh, and um, yeah, it, it's really good to play games on as well. The latency is really low uh, and there's no lag uh, when I'm playing games on this. And also the Bluetooth codec is really good. It comes with the LDAC codec. It's got the Aptex HD, Aptex X, AAC, SBC, and a whole lot of uh, uh, available uh, Bluetooth codecs on this uh, Blue Mini uh, R2R adapter. So I think uh, on a whole and the overall package, um, I would say that you know 599 US dollars is a very good valued headphone. Uh, you get Bluetooth, you get uh, a very nice, warm, soothing, bassy type of uh, sound signature, a more uh, party type of headphone. Uh, and yeah, and also as I mentioned earlier, uh, when you pair it up with a tube amp like this, it makes this headphone even more uh, warm and it's, it distorts that sound a little bit and it gives a wider sound stage on the HER9. And I really did enjoy uh, using this uh, tube amp on the HER9. Okay, so this is my very quick and short impression of this HER9. I hope you learned something from this video and also enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, uh, do consider to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so that you get notified of my videos. All right, so thank you so much for watching this video and uh, I hope you guys have a great day ahead and I'll see you again in my next video. Cheers.